Hello everyone, this is Eric Johnson, the brand, and Aaron Thigpen, the source. Aaron, today's topic is why don't kids run so well in games? Well, there's a lot of reasons for that. And the sport has to take responsibility on how it really coaches these kids. And, and the way I see it is kids don't run well in baseball because they don't run, just quite simply. Um, there's some social you know, factors to that. There's some structural factors in terms of how sports are, are now being played and how they're being you know, put together in terms of instruction. Um, and those are probably the underlying reasons why a lot of kids don't run. And I think running is the glue that kind of keeps all these other athletic things together. You know, your running helps with your coordination, your balance, your explosiveness, all which are attributes that you've got to take to other parts of playing baseball. Uh, but here's probably three of my first primary reasons that athletes don't, uh, don't run well. One, the biggest one is they're not taught. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's quite simple, you know. Baseball coach gets a bunch of kids out there and he doesn't probably know how to teach running. Correct. He may have them run, but he does not teach running. So got an, a coach who doesn't have that skill set, and it's fine because not everyone has a skill set. And then two, you know, the kids want some action. So they're out there to hit and throw. <laughs> right. So <laughs> if you say the first day of baseball practice, hey, we're going to work on our running technique, you're, you're going to lose a lot of kids mentally. So... That, that's probably one of the biggest things. But I think coaches do have the responsibility, regardless of what sport that they're in, have the responsibility to have some kind of foundational basis of athleticism and they're built into their programs. So whether it's just running mechanics, jumping, change of direction, all of those sorts of things I think need to be put into a program. And it's easy for them to do just incorporate it with your warm up. Oh, I like that. You know, you take 15 minutes or whatever time that you have available to you and you have a medley of exercises that you do that reinforce proper running mechanics, jumping mechanics, change of direction, uh, sorts of things. And over the course of time, well, if you're practicing three days a week, well, now you're getting some running training in three days a week. I like that because it seems like in our industry, a lot of coaches don't understand that because they think, you know, like you said, there's there's baseball skills to only be developed and not this athleticism skills that need to be. You know, I found out over the years that athletes function better from a baseball standpoint if there is some sort of sports performance in their warm up and the fundamentals of running are incorporated with that. The players move better in the games and they move better in practice. Also, I have to make this point, is that it seems like they're better conditioned. Yes, because again, I'm from the school of thought where I look at the cumulative effect of training as to condition an athlete. Even with my track and field athletes, you know, there's this uh, perception in track and field that you do all this off-season training, and now you're in shape. And, you know, like the, the clouds are going to part and God's hand is going to come down and touch you and say, hey, you've done three months of training. You are now in shape. Go and play. Go forth and play. And it's like, no, it doesn't happen that way. You, you're continually building yourself into shape. And, and the approach that I take is the cumulative effect of practicing and training every day with those components in there, over time is what puts you in the proper condition. Because now your conditioning and your technical development are moving along together. What tends to happen is people say, yeah, I gotta get in shape, I gotta get in shape. So they do all this work getting in shape and they say, okay, well now I'm gonna do my technical stuff. Oh. And they don't bridge the two together. And what ends up happening is they go to do all their technical stuff, they leave all the conditioning structure behind, and what happens? Now they start to get out of shape. Right. And they're trying to continue to do technical stuff and they're slowly getting out of shape. So that's not a, uh, a 
prescription that I that I adhere to. Right. So you know, when I was growing up, Aaron, we used to have races in the street. Yep. We used to run all the time. Street light to street light. And and at the school level, going to school, there was PE, and you know, you have your races and stuff like that. Um, it seems like that's lost now with kids. Everything is so structured right. with just stuff. But I, I don't understand. I think there was some some sort of competition that you would have when you're actually competing against another kid running down the right. street, and there would be some action and that that nervousness and that that, that competitive spirit you have right. to learn how to compete. Okay. Well, that comes to my second point. Uh, my second point is kids don't play outdoor games anymore. And, and when you don't play, you don't have that broad range or repertory of movements. You don't develop those when you're playing tag and you're twisting and turning and cutting or playing, you know, street football and you're, you're running and you're, you're trying to run in between cars to catch a ball and all of those things that are kind of impromptu movements, they all build an athletic skill set. What happens is, you know, mom and dad takes Joey to baseball practice and he does this narrow band of movements. And most of them aren't athletic, like we just discussed. They're all sports specific. So you have this sort of environment now where it's so structured, there's no kind of broad holistic view of the development of the athlete. And because you don't have, you know, you have decreasing levels of PE at school, and because kids aren't going outside for whatever reason, safety reasons, uh, sedent just they're sedentary or playing you know video games, right. there is no outlet for them to explore these sorts of things. And I call it athletic creativity. Ooh. I mean, I used to, you know, everyone's stuck inside today, but I can go out. What would I do? Took a tennis ball, threw it against the wall off my garage door, right. and I and I I. I Imagine I was shortstop from the Cardinals, right. Ozzy, you know, or I, I thought, right. I was, you know, all the guys back in the day. I was Hank Aaron, you know, right. I'm throwing rocks up and hitting rocks with my bat. <laughs> you know, what we did right exactly, and and those are the sorts of things that develop that athletic creativity, one in the mind and two in the body, and and now when you do have your buddies out there, now you've got that competitive aspect, and like I said before. I grew up on a block with probably about 12 kids, 12, 13 kids, Absolutely. mostly boys, mm -hmm. and, and I was probably in the middle age, so I was always playing these games with kids who were two, three years older, and they were competitive. Well, now kids don't get any real competitive, uh, in a competitive environment unless they're at practice, if the coaches make them competitive, or until they get in the game. So it's how can you really respond if you it's that infrequent? It's like I tell the kids, they say, well, why, you know, why should I learn how to run? I said, well, you're a good hitter if you're one for three. Well, don't you need to be ready to run that one time? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, if, if you're only going to make contact one out of every three times, don't you want to make the most out of that? <laughs> you better start running. You, know, you don't want to wait until then to find out, well, oh, my, my running subpar and well, now you're not get on base. So I, again, I have a different different take on it. <laughs> that that's funny. That you know brings it to the other point about it seems like kids get in the game, they hit the ball, and they hold their breath. <laughs> you know, they start grinding their teeth and clenching up and making a hard fist, making these crazy faces and doing all kinds of stuff. And I think it goes back to you know not teaching kids how to run properly and that's so tough because kids kids seem to be athletic these days. We have a lot of things going on these days, but no one's teaching them how to run, Aaron. It's, yeah. it's, the, it's the most interesting, interesting concept. Yeah. And here's my third point in terms of why kids don't run well. One, coaches obviously aren't training it on a, on a broad scale. And two, running in most sports is used as a punishment. You guys quit screwing around or we're going to run laps. Right. Oh, you guys blew the game this weekend. You know what? We're running poles for 10 minutes. So running is not introduced as something fun. It's introduced as a punishment. Right. 
So kids have a negative connotation. Now what coaches should do is they should institute games and practice that make them run. I call it the wax on, wax off principle. Okay. You know? okay. So maybe okay. you're having some sort of running games going on inside of practice that teach them acceleration, that teach them running out of the proper stance, that teach them how to clear the batter's box or, or maybe from a defensive aspect. But if you start to put those in, now you've got them running and now you can start to make little corrections and give them some instruction and they're having running practice without even knowing it. I love that idea. I think more of us in our industry need to embrace that because I, I think a lot is put on punishment. When you run, it's a it's a punishment. You know, you guys didn't do that, or you got to do this better, so you're not paying attention, go run. And if we can embrace the ideology of making it a game and creating that, you know, imagination where you can run and have it baseball related, that's that's a plus plus for me. Yeah. And, I, you know, to take it further, in baseball, it's not looked at as a priority tool. And, and I guess baseball sometimes ebbs and flows because you've got right. power ball and you got small ball and, and that sort of thing. But on the whole, I don't think it's looked at as a priority tool, or at least one that can be developed. They just kind of throw their hands up, either you're fast or you're not, and that's it. You know, Because yeah. everyone hears the term, you're born fast. Well, speed is a skill. And we're not talking about necessarily making every kid on your team, Ricky Henderson, I know I'm dating myself, but, <laughs> but, um, but again, I always illustrate to the kids, what if you're one to two steps faster from home to first? You don't have to be the fastest kid on the team, but what will that do to your batting average? So you've got to really start to define how you want speed to manifest itself to these kids so that they understand its importance and its importance to them as a baseball athlete then they can say, hey, you know what? This is gonna increase my range. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna maybe add another 100 points to my batting average. Or, hey, now I can steal. So it starts. they start to see how they can use it in their arsenal as a baseball athlete versus just saying, well, time we do sprints, I'm the last kid or I'm the second to last or everyone says I'm not fast. Doesn't matter. Because in baseball, you gotta be fast, but you also have to be smart. Right. I like that though because I think you know with the Powerball era and all the stuff that's going on and launch angle and the things that they're emphasizing um, through social media on hitting and stuff like that running is something that is an important tool in baseball you can't you can't you can acquire the skill and make it better and that makes players better but no one wants to work at it and I think in this day and age, it's going to come back. We, we have a whole bunch of athletes now that are bigger, stronger, taller, faster, all that stuff. And, and they realize that that can change and impact a game so fast. Like you said, Ricky Henderson, he changed the game. Yeah. I think that player is coming back. I, I, it's not far removed from the game yet. Yeah. And even if you're not looking at just the Major League Baseball structure, right. you've got to look at the development side because – what happens and what separates kids when they're going from t-ball to little league right. to high school to college and travel ball and so forth and so on is the game gets faster right so you need the speed from a reaction standpoint from a running standpoint from a defensive standpoint and you just don't automatically get that by doing your reps of hitting and, and right. pitching and, and throwing and that sort of thing that's something that changes internally in your clock, in your body's clock as well. And running can help you make that transition. I like that. That's such a concept. So it makes a lot of sense, you know, why kids don't run well today, Eric. And uh, it seems like uh, if we could really, as a baseball instructional side, help the kids and really focus on games that are related to helping them get out of the batter's box or still in a base or working on their first step on defense or tracking balls in the outfield and running routes to ball. That's fun. Yeah. You know, I think kids would want to do that. Yeah. Now, again, make it a game, integrate it into your everyday activities, mm -hmm. put it into your, your warm ups, put it into your, you know, maybe your warm downs, 
putting into different games that, again, maybe the kids don't necessarily know that they're, they're running. And I think you'll find yourself with a better team, a more athletic team, a balanced team, coordinated team, more explosive team, and, and just a better overall athletic team. Well, Aaron, I like that concept and some of the ideas that you, you we talked about today. And, you know, we have some new stuff coming up, Aaron. We have the Hit Dynamic Internet Series that's coming up virtually. And we've got other ideas of athletic infielder, all kinds of things coming with hardball athletics. Yeah. So we want everybody to stay tuned to what the brand and the source have coming towards you. So uh, until next time, this is Eric Johnson, the and brand. And Aaron Thigpen, the source, we'll catch you on the flip side.